<clears throat> All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, then uh, turn with us to Judges chapter 14. Judges 14 and the, the uh, special songs today kind of go along with this message. So <clears throat> I've preached on this subject before, maybe not quite in the way that we're going to preach on it today. Hopefully you don't get tired of this topic, but we're going to preach on what came upon our heart. Uh, Judges 14, before we get started, we'll open with a word of prayer. Father, we bow before you today. God, we're thankful, Lord, for your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us as we look at your word, dear God. Lift up your people. Teach us, God, by thy Holy Spirit. Draw the lost unto thee, we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Uh, the first song that uh, Beverly and, and uh, Angel and Trent son. Uh, Till the storm passes by, my grandmother used to sing that song a lot. Thankful for that song. And, and of course, we all go through storms. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But more so, we're going to talk about what complicates the storm today. But we're also going to talk about the fact that how we react to it uh, has an impact on us as well. Because as, as Mary said, we are blessed. We are very blessed. <coughs> And the enemy wants us to forget how blessed we are. He doesn't want us to understand uh, that even in the dark times of life, God's blessings are upon us. You see, when difficulties come, the enemy likes to come and whisper all of his lies to us and make us miss still yet the blessings uh, that God has set before us and are ever before us every day. So John chapter 14, I want to, or excuse me, Judges chapter 14 Starting with the fifth verse, the Bible says this, Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the women, woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and gave them, and they did eat, but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. We'll stop reading right there. Uh, Chuck Swindoll uh, has said a number of times throughout the years I've listened to him preach, and I, I think I've got this right. I haven't heard it recently, but he said he believes that uh, life is 10% what happens to us and 90% of how we react to it. And I think that's probably a pretty good statement. Now, I'll admit to you, I'm not always the best at reacting to life. I'm not. Uh, bad things happen, and, and I have the personality. You guys know about my mental health history. I have a, a, a very uh, quick ability, or disability, you would say, to let things bother me bad. Now, some people are like that. Some people are not like that. And I'm working on that. Because, you see, as Mary said in the song, we are blessed. If we are saved today, we are blessed. The Lord called us to be saved. We answered that call. And as the Bible says in the book of Revelation, Jesus washed us in his own blood. God became our heavenly father. And so we are blessed. And you know, the enemy will come to us with all kinds of lies here in just a little bit when things we'll see and when things don't go our way. And make us believe things about God that simply aren't true. And the word of God says, if God be for us, who can be against us. And most certainly, God is for us. Amen. The cross of Calvary is the biggest proof that God is for us today. The evils that we see happen in the world is not the will of God. God doesn't desire those things. And listen, the things that happen in our life, the tragedies, the sicknesses that come upon these bodies, and the things we go through, they come because of sin in the world. Now listen, we know that there is a deeper thing to the will of God. There is the permissive will of God, the perfect will of God, and we can't fully grasp that as humans. We know that God could intervene in things, 
and he doesn't sometimes, he'll explain all of that one day in the sweet by and by. Our job is to trust him and understand that he loves us, understand that he is for us, understand that there are blessings for his children on this side of eternity still yet. So many churches today, so many Christians today are, are, are living with their heads hunkered down. They walk around with staring at the ground because they have lost sight. The enemy has stolen. The world has stolen today uh, the blessings that God still has for his church. I believe 100%, and I've said this, I don't know, maybe a hundred or more times. I know we're getting closer to the day that Jesus Christ will come back for his church. I know we're getting closer to the time of the tribulation. And as we do, things are going to get darker as we see them get darker in the world. But listen, things can get dark in the world. That doesn't negate God's blessing upon his children and upon his body of believers called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't change any of those things. Now, we know, though, that there is an enemy. We know that there is an enemy. And listen, the enemy can be defeated by our faith today. His lies can be defeated by our faith today. The child of God is not meant, don't get me wrong when I, what, with what I'm about to say, because I'm not saying you're going to be on the mountaintop every day. I'm not saying you're going to shout and praise God like you want to every day. But listen, the child of God is not meant to be sitting around wondering, is God for me? Does God love me? Does God want to bless me? Uh, is God in all of this? The child of God is not meant to wander around life like that. No, we are meant to be overcomers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are meant to lift up His name through His blood. And so we want to look at this little story here right quick and understand that while many times I have failed in this, and, and don't get me wrong, there is a growing process, as we have said many times, uh, when the pressure comes upon us in life and we are held to the fire and we go through the storm, as the old song says. But sometimes we go through the storm, sometimes the pressure comes upon us uh, because we haven't enacted the faith in the Word of God like we should, and we let the enemy overcome us. So let's look at this today. The Bible says there in that fifth verse that Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and while they were there, they come to the vineyards of Timnath. Now listen to me very carefully. And behold, it says, a young lion roared against him. Now, I've told you guys before uh, that... I like walking back in the woods. I love hiking back in the woods, going back into the hills. Uh, I, I hope God never calls me away to live in the plains of the, the Midwest because I think I would become a depressed, even more depressed person. I like the hills. I like the mountains. I, I like all of that. And I can imagine that if I was walking back in those hills that we have around here and I heard a lion come up roaring against me, uh, I imagine... Uh, if I make it out of there, I'm probably going to have to get a change of drawers. Just to put it plain. <laughs> That'll scare you. That would scare you. Now, here's the thing about it. We go along in life, and, and life happens. Life happens. And how we react to that is going to dictate a whole lot. If we grab a hold of our faith and believe in the Word of God... Not that everything is necessarily going to be all right. Not that the healing is going to come. Not that our, our, our job is going to stay. Not that we'll get a certain job. Not that this situation will work out. But hold on to God that He is going to bring us through. And that He loves us. That His blessings is there for us. Well, that can, that can help us uh, to still worship in the storm. Uh, to still have victory in the storm. But a lot of times what happens is as we are walking along... The lion begins to roar at us. The Bible tells us in the book of Peter, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Now I want to say something very plainly to us today, something I think we probably already know. Do you know today as a child of God that Satan cannot touch you? That's the truth. 
Unless he gets the permission of God, he cannot touch you. But he can rule. He is a deceiver. He is a liar. He spits his lies out to us. We've all, we've all experienced it. Have you ever been, been just going through your, your daily life and all of a sudden, a thought comes into your head. Does God really love me? Has that ever happened? It's probably happened to all of us, hasn't it? It just hits you out of nowhere. Where does that come from? Well, it doesn't come from the Holy Spirit of God that indwells you. Because you see, that, that type of thinking is meant to confuse you. And the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. No, God wants us in the Lord Jesus Christ to have a, a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind, the Word of God says, not to be confused by things. Let me just throw this in there very quickly for free. I hadn't thought about this till just now. So whenever you hear the doctrine of man that confuses you, understand that that doctrine is not from the Lord if it's a confusing doctrine. God's doctrine is meant to be easy to understand. I'm not saying we're going to understand every single thing in the Bible because there's prophecies that there's no way that we can fully interpret. But there's some prophecies that we have seen come and we, as time has went on, we have gained more insight into how these things will come to pass. But nonetheless, moving on. The enemy comes and he roars in your situation. Life happens. Life happens. I could, I could get sick. I could get cancer. That's just the truth. I could. Now, here's the thing about it. If it comes, God allowed it to happen. That doesn't mean that it was His perfect will because in this life, things happen to us because we live in a sin cursed world. God may heal me. God may not. I don't know about that. I bring that up. I can remember... Uh, that there was an, an evangelist that used to travel, and, and he uh, he was also an, an apologist. An apologist is someone who defends the faith. <clears throat> um, I can't remember his last name, but his first name was Nabil. And he ended up being di diagnosed in his 30s with stage 4 stomach cancer. It was terminal. And there was a video of him. I've got the video saved. And he says, look, he says, I have terminal stage 4 stomach cancer. He said, I could begin to question God if I wanted and say, God, why me? I'm out here traveling the world. I'm out here preaching your word. I'm out here defending the faith. He said he knew that God was going to call him home through this. He said, I could question. I could get angry. He says, but listen, God loves me so much. He gave his only begotten son for me. I thought, man, that is some powerful powerful faith. You see, the enemy could have taken that roar that no doubt came into the Bill's mind. The enemy could have taken that roar and used it to squish him down. But the Bill chose a different reaction. He chose faith. The enemy will roar. How he roars at you to get you down, how he roars at me might be a little different. But nonetheless, he does that. Nonetheless, he does it. So we have a choice. That we have to make. You know, I, I'm coming to realize as I get older, and as I as I um, counsel uh, counsel people through the years, the, the statement I'm about to make is a simple statement, but I have found it to be so true. Our belief in the Word of God and the reality of God and His promises to His children have such a huge impact on us. Such a huge impact. They totally can change our outlook. Totally can change our mood. They may not change our situation. The situation may change the same, but it may change us in the situation. It is so important. It is so important that we hold on to these wonderful, precious promises in our life because the enemy will war. Now, if we grab a hold, you see, I, I, I do not believe I do not believe that it is, it is meant for us, as I said earlier, to walk around looking and being defeated like we always do sometimes. And I include myself in that. Because as I said at the beginning of this message, some, I, I need to enact this better in my life. So if, if this message isn't for anybody here, maybe it's just for me. And that's fine. But listen... We are not meant to be overcome by the enemy. 
We are meant not by our power to overcome the enemy. We are meant by his power to overcome the enemy. And it says here in the sixth verse, listen to what it says. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The lion roared at him. Now, you see the cartoons and a lot of a lot of the Christian cartoons and, and comic books and things would have <laughs> Samson being some big muscular man like me. That was a joke. You can laugh at that if you want. They would have him being some big muscular. I would imagine Samson was probably actually an average looking man. Because you see, God takes the average and the ordinary, uh, the weak appearing, and he makes it something strong by his spirit. And I think that's exactly what happened here. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Do you know what happens to us when we believe the Word of God and don't doubt it? The Spirit, that is, that is an activator for the Spirit of God within us to rise up within us, to teach us, to speak to us, and to help us. The Holy Spirit of God lives within us not just so that we'll go to heaven one day, but so that we can walk in victory in the Lord on this side of eternity as well. And it comes by faith. It comes by faith, by believing. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. What happened? Well, it says he took this line, which can absolutely just rip people to shreds. And it said, Samson, who I believe was probably a, a pretty average looking guy, it says he rent him as though he would have ran a kid. Just ripped the line apart, barehanded. Barehanded. Say, preacher, do you really believe that? Absolutely, I believe that. I believe that 100%. And so he left off from there. Went on doing what he was doing. Left from there. Now listen to this, and here's where I want us to take hold, because probably all of us can, we can recall times where the enemy really got us down. All of us, if we can think, we can probably recall times that by faith, by faith, we've overcome the enemy. By faith in the Lord, we have overcome his attacks. And I bring that up because, you see, we need to remember those times and choose to be that person. You say, well, what does that have to do with the message? Well, it says there in the 8th verse, And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Honey there, something sweet in there. There can be something sweet in the moments where the enemy comes. And we defeat him by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we learn something. And we can look back and we can remember. We can remember. Because as you grow as a Christian, you will be, be more attacked by the enemy than what you were when you were younger as a Christian. I didn't think that to be true until I told you guys this story before. Until I asked Larry Wells one day. I said, Larry, once you, you've grown as much as you've grown, been on this road as long as you have, it probably gets easier, don't you? He looked at me and said, nope, it gets harder. And I was like, that's all I want to hear, Larry. But I found that to be true. He told me that in my late 20s. I'm in my early 40s now. I found that to be very, very true. But you know what? We can look back. We can look back on those moments, and we can find strength in those moments. But not only that, I'm, one more point, I'm going to hush. I can remember, we need, we need to share our weaknesses and how to overcome them with our brothers and sisters. Too many times in the church, I'm not saying this church, I'm saying the church, too many times in the church, people walk around like they don't ever fail. Now, you know what that does to a person who's young in the faith? It will rip them up. Because they're like, Man, I, don't, I just I, I can't get it together. I can't get it together. I remember I, I, I ran Dave Shug Friday evening at the football game, and we were sitting there talking a little bit. And I thanked him because I, I and I believe this was the Lord's plan. And I didn't have this message on my mind until actually yesterday morning. And I was thinking about this event Thursday, and then Friday I ran into Dave. I can remember at a conference one time. 
And I, 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 was, I was within my first year preaching. And uh, we was at a conference at a church, and Dave come sat beside me. Um, and he leaned over and whispered something to me. And I won't say what it was. It was something kind of personal. And I believe the Lord laid that upon his heart to tell me that because he had no idea I would be struggling with that. I've held that near to me ever since. But it meant a lot to me for a man who had been on the road as long as Dave and has preached as long as Dave to tell me what he told me because the impression I got from other preachers and other Christians was that they never had this struggle. And I needed to hear that. I needed that bit of honey. I needed to know that there, there can be a struggle, but you can also be overcome. And I bring that up because of this. The Bible says there in that ninth verse, um, and he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and listened and gave to them and they did it. We need to be honest with each other as Christians about our struggles and let each other know, hey, I've had this, but the word of God, by the word of God, you can overcome. By the word of God, you can overcome. I don't know today if, if we've had anybody, if we got anybody here today that is lost. And I know this wasn't a, a, a salvation message, but we, we was moved to preach this, and I believe that through this message we've preached enough gospel for you to understand that, listen, uh, God loves you and God desires to save you. You know, why, why, why do we come to church? Why do we do what we do? Because one day, um, almost 23 years ago, uh, I found God to be so sweet to the soul, just like that honey in that carcass. I found a Savior in Jesus Christ. And we've got people here at this church who have been on the road double and, and triple the amount of time that I've been on this road. And they'll tell you uh, that he's even sweeter than what I know him to be. Because as Brother Mickey used to say, it gets gooder and gooder. And it certainly does. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody here that is lost. But if you are lost and, and God is calling you, come to him just believing in Jesus. We studied in the Sunday school lesson today. And the main, main takeaway from today's Sunday school lesson was that Jesus Christ himself is the righteousness of God. And you, you believe in him to receive that righteousness. You, you can't do anything on your own as we stand today.